Oh, look at the time. Uh, hey, hey, uh, would you wanna, you know, go out sometime? I know this place that makes great samosas and it, Professor, for, no, for the last time, I am not signing your petition to get rid of the mythic rarity. Stop asking. Just, I love the color red. How you doing? No, not that. Wedge, it's been three months. It's time for our regular podcast. I don't want to be late again. Look, everyone voted on the topic to be cube. So are you okay with that? Oh, oh, no problem, Prof. I actually know a lot about cube. Oh, good. I didn't realize you were that familiar with Cube. Sure. Uh, the first thing we should let people know is to go through the keyhole. Yeah, just after solving the top face, you definitely want to solve the bottom or like the, the opposite face. Wait, 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 wait. My top face. Right. Well, hang on. Let me get the key. Oh, I don't have a keyhole. I don't have a keyhole. Is that a security thing? Now, bottom... Hang on, I can just open my cube, see? Oh yeah, that's really basic though. The goal is to solve the bottom face without moving any of the top making the keyhole. Once you're done with that, you just need to move the keyhole piece back into place. Okay, 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 so I close the top, and then I know main phase, right? You said main phase, right? But we're still drafting. There's no main phase when we draft the cube, and I still don't quite get... Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Please, I've got my cube right here in front of me. All you really have to do is know the algorithm without the notation in front of you, and you know, it's it's all about it's it's all about hand it's all about hand memory. Are you writing any of this down, Professor? Professor, Professor. I think I need to give Milo a call. Greetings and salutations. You have planeswalked somewhere very special and very, very infrequent. For you have come to the Dies to Removal podcast. With me as always is the man with a plan, the guy with gusto, source of mana himself, Wedge. Hello. Wow, that, that didn't sound rehearsed at all. No, not even a little. Amazing work, sir. Amazing work. Today is awesome. I know it's been a while since we've done one of these, but, but today the topic is cube. We're going to talk all about it. And honestly, there is no one I would rather have on this episode than our good friend Milo. I didn't know I had to rehearse things I did before I joined this listen. podcast. That's just, that's just me. I just, it just came out. It just came oh, out. Oh yeah, just right. nailed it. Absolutely. No pre-planning at all. Zero. Thank you so much for having me here. It's uh, it's quite an honor. This is definitely my favorite podcast about magic. So it's pretty cool. It's a pretty oh good my. feeling. For I the, got the feels already. We that's even how you get on the yet. podcast, by the way. That's how you get. That's how you get on the podcast. Just tell us that you really like it. <laughs> pretty much. That's Nailed that's it. pretty much the criteria. Uh, so people who may not be familiar with Milo's channel. Uh, Milo, why don't you take a moment to tell people about what your YouTube channel is about, what kind of videos they can expect if they go there? Yeah, so uh, I have a YouTube channel called Milo the Gathering, and uh, we tend to focus on the um, casual uh, aspects of magic. We we do weird tournaments. Uh, sometimes we do we go all out and do like a, a high budget, high production value a tournament of that. Of a, of a format that you've never heard before. Um, and then other times we focus on cube. We have like a uh, cube championships. It's kind of a house league thing that I do with my friends. Uh, but we've been playing cube since like 2003. Um, and the cube has evolved and we've evolved as players. And uh, it's just it's just been a great ride. Yeah, I, I got to say when it comes to, and I feel like I need to say this, when it comes to production value of coverage, there is no, and think about this, this is coming both because I know I speak for both myself and the professor when I say this, best coverage on the internet, hands down across all of Magic, Milo has it. If you want quality, like production value, no one comes close. It's not even fair. Yeah. You, it, you have like a monopoly on greatness. 
Uh, thanks. That's 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 huge. <laughs> Thank you very much and, for and saying that. And what I especially that. I mean, I don't, like I don't about it is that it, you do these. I, yeah. Sorry. Go on. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, I I, I don't believe that that yet. Um, but we're always pushing ourselves, and everything that we do, the next one's going to be better all of the time. Um, just the, the last time we realized people wanted to see the draft coverage, and so when it, when it was something that we thought we would never be able to do, we ended up focusing on two different drafters at the same time, and we kind of kind of went all out on the uncovering the draft footage of one of our events, um, and and next time it's going to be something else, and time after that it's going to be something else. We keep tacking things on. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun to do. Yeah, you just finished up with the Mystery Chaos draft. And and that's really another thing I love about your channel is that you are able to do formats like that. You know, at my local game store, they have a really good reputation because the owner loves things like Chaos Drafts. And he has a lot of old packs and boxes and he organizes regular chaos drafts and it's a really fun time but you're never going to see that on channel fireball they're never going to have a gp coverage of the gp <laughs> chaos draft which would actually be really cool of them That'd be sweet. to do it would be sweet like you wouldn't believe and so when i tune in to your youtube channel and i'm seeing channel fireball level production quality and they're doing a chaos mystery draft it's such a delight and i think that uh, also, the fact that you're there for, you know, viewers to communicate with, you know, again, with Channel Fireball, you got tens of thousands of people and it's like it turns into a kind of white noise sometimes. I mean, they can literally just comment on your videos and speak to you and 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 ask questions, maybe even make requests. And so it's just such an awesome channel. I encourage everybody viewing to go check it out. We'll have links in the description. Please. Yeah. If you don't, we're going to have words. <laughs> Not going to be pleasant. Just, okay, they'll probably be pleasant, but it's fine. Right, right. You should go. Right. So right. Uh, we, we asked in our last episode for our viewers to ask us what no, to tell us, not ask us. We yeah, did not, us, they did us. not, we said tell us nicely, but what they would, and most of them did, what they would like the next episode to be on. And it was overwhelming. Like it wasn't even close. Cube, cube. Cube, out of nowhere. Cube. I, I was Just, really surprised. Like, I thought Wedge was joking. I hadn't looked at the comments right away, and he texted me, and he said, well, I guess we're doing Cube. And I was <laughs> like, ha, 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 yeah, right. What they, what they really want, you know, like spoilers or, or, or storyline or something like that, which is what I would have assumed. And nope, it was just, like overwhelming majority of people asking for cube which got me really excited and the first person i thought of was you know bringing milo on to talk uh, uh about cube with us as well why don't we just start out though with some commonly asked questions because not everybody is familiar with cube and so let's just start with the basics what is a cube if I didn't know what a cube was, uh, what is a cube? Um, I think uh, a cube is a limited format that's created by a player or a group of players, as opposed to relying on Wizards of the Coast to create the limited format for you. And you do that with cards that either you made up yourself or cards that um, existed and, and have already been printed. And then you take them from all different sets and uh, you reuse them like found art <laughs> and you create this 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 new piece of artwork this cube this limited format that that you made and uh, and then you and your friends can play it forever and you don't have to pay for packs every time you want to draft yeah i mean it can be expensive depending on what type of cube you build but we'll talk a little bit about how there uh, there are other types of cubes besides just a, a power cube or uh, uh one of those high-end cubes but I really like to think of Cube as you get to design your own Magic the Gathering set. Only you have to use cards that have already been printed. But when you go down to draft and you get that booster box, there is engineering and extreme calculations that have been orchestrated to create those packs and to create that alchemy of that booster box. And when you build a cube, you are essentially building your own booster box to draft from. And I especially, myself, love what you just said, which is that once it is complete, you no longer have to pay to draft. Once you do have your cube, it's like you and your friends can draft all you want for free from that cube. And you can control elements of it. Don't like 
combo. You don't have to have combo as a win con in your cube. Love combo. You can ensure that combo is properly supported and what type of combo and, and, and so forth and so on. And so you can make those decisions. Uh, uh, and it's really, you know, I always flinch when someone describes it as casual because I guess it is technically a casual format, but I think that cube is to spikes what Commander is to Timmy's and Johnny's. And I do hate that terminology, but I'm using it as as shorthand, meaning that what Commander is, uh, uh, what Commander is to uh, players who are maybe more interested in fun or interact, well, fun, who are maybe more interested in, in, you know, using their favorite cards just for a thrill or or crazy interactions and Commander has that draw to them. And a lot of Spike players don't always end up in Commander. And I think that Cube is kind of the equivalent of that for them and that they are designing the ultimate draft environment. And whether it's a popper cube or a power cube, with, of course, exceptions to the rule, you're looking to create the optimum, the ultimate draft environment. And it's a, it's, it's a total spiky thing in that sense and, and very exhilarating, wouldn't you say? No, I, I, I totally agree. I want to touch on a few of the, thing, a few of the things you said. One, uh, I think what's overlooked a lot, and we're going to talk about this a lot more, is that cube at the end of the day, it's drafting, right? You're playing a limited environment and to get better at everyone. So many of my viewers ask me all the time, how do I get better mm -hmm. at drafting draft? You have to, right? This, it doesn't cube doesn't have to be something that just a group of friends do casually. It, it makes you a better player one, two. And what spoke to me the most when I first heard of the format, it is eternal value. The most eternal value you could ever get you build it and then it it pays for itself forever. That I mean, if you want to change it, obviously you can change it, but you don't have to, right? And I think that's oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> It's like it's like those of us who grew up those of us who grew up on video games kids still play video games right well like for me in my generation we had these things called video games and when you went out to the store and bought that video game you didn't have to keep buying it once it was expensive and you saved up and you got it but once you had it you could play it all you want and draft is like a video game cube, of magic yeah. the gathering in that sense for draft for cube uh for magic the gathering and and you just all you need is your friends over uh, and another great thing about it is if you have friends who played former Magic the Gathering and then have sold out and they come over to your house for the weekend or for an evening, you can pull out your cube. They don't need, you know, I had some friends over the other night and they said, let's get some magic. And I said, what decks did you bring? They didn't bring any decks. So we pulled out the cube. And a lot of people have frustration where they have friends who know how to play, but they aren't in the same formats. They don't still have decks, whatever. And so if you own a cube, when you are with your friends, you can always get games with them, even if they leave the game for a long period uh, sort of thing. So that's great too. And it also keeps those players fresh, right? So if they come by and they cube with your cube like once a month or something and you keep updating your cube, they're going to know what some of the cards that have come out are like. They're going to know what the new mechanics do um, as you introduce them in your cube. So they could play once a month, once every two months, once a, you know, a block. And as long as they're playing cube, they're still keeping up to date with what's going on in Magic. Absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, so that's what a cube is. Uh, uh, what does it consist of? I mean, so if I, one of the questions I get a lot is if we are recreating booster packs, and that's what most people call it when you you take fifteen card piles from your cube, you shuffle it up, which is hard, and uh, 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 and after you have sufficiently shuffled that uh, booster box worth of cards in, in most cases, you pull out your own random packs. Do you need to worry about ratios like mythic and rare and uncommon and common? Or uh, uh, how many of each card? Those are a lot of real common questions as well. Do you have duplicate cards? Yeah, the most traditional cube, I would say, um, would have just one of, so it's a singleton format. Um, and you don't really worry about rarity at all. Uh, you just shuffle the whole thing together, make sure it's thoroughly shuffled. This is like one of the major issues with cubing. If you cube a lot, you'll totally understand what I'm well, saying. How, how many cards are usually in a cube to give context to this? Okay, there's like the usually 360. That's enough for eight players to get three packs of 15. 
So that's why 360 is a number that most people kind of aim for or try to get their cube size to be around 360. Um, and, and the whole thing needs to be shuffled because at the end of the night, when everybody's finished with with the cube, you'll be lucky if you could get the players to take the basic lands out of their decks. Like, like that's you're, you'll be lucky if that happens. So most of the time, the cube is just each deck put back into the cube. And so you really got to make sure that you're shuffling that thing before you start playing. Um, yeah, and... Uh, you don't really worry about the commons and commons risk. I, I've seen a few people say that they want to rebuild packs the way Wizards builds them, and they want to have, like, I guess, 11 commons, 3 uncommons, and a rare. Um, you might think that that's a good idea, like, the before you even play your cube, but once you realize how much shuffling is involved with owning a cube and playing a cube, I think that... Uh, logistically like you're you're probably just going to want to make sure it's thoroughly shuffled and and play it that way i also think that that demonstrates a misunderstanding on a lot of players parts about power level where a lot of people think that commons are uh, uh constricted to a certain power level versus an uncommon or a rare and so they want that ratio when in fact you opening up a booster uh, pack if i go down to my store and open up a theros booster pack there are cards in there that are designed to be intentionally bad intentionally good for all of those rarity levels and with a cube you are again ideally trying to eliminate all the intentionally bad cards and try and only have the strictly better versions. Even in a popper cube, you're looking at all popper cards and trying to have the strictly better option in there. I actually like to say that if you aren't doing like a, a, a rarity based theme for your cube, like a popper cube, you need to imagine that rarity doesn't exist. Try and shut out the mythic color, the gold color for rare, the silver color for uncommon, and just read the card and read the text and use only the text and the card color, red, blue, whatever, as your criteria. Imagine that rarity didn't exist. You are putting one ofs in your cube, look at what the card does, and examine it based on its function that it's gonna have in that cube. And that's, of course, with some exception, but that's really what you gotta get past, is you gotta get past rarity. I think that's a great point, too. Um, and one of the examples I could think of in a high-powered cube right off the bat is uh, that Lightning Bolt is going to get picked over Tarmogoyf almost 100% of the time. Like, Goyf is is actually really low-powered, and it's not even in a lot of cubes. Even though the card's, like, what, 160 bucks or something? It doesn't, it, it doesn't do its job in, in Limited. Um, but I, I, I guess there was a famous incident with that recently as well. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I would not pick a Tarmogoyf over a Lightning Bolt, but I might pick it over a Burst <laughs> Lightning. I mean, they'll, also, they'll do you, different uh, things. All right, let's well, see. I don't want to talk about I don't want to mention Gate. really quick, I you don't, don't get to keep the cards in Gate. Gate. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yeah. Talk about expensive. That's true. My you goodness. do not get to keep the cards in Cube. They go back in the cube <laughs> for that owner at the end of the night. Um, I think that's a great example that Lightning Bolt is a, a, a going to get picked over Goyf. Goyf might not even be included. Uh, do you have a Goyf in your cube? I do. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but definitely that Lightning Bolt, a common, is going to be picked over uh, Goyf that is not only a rare, but right now because of the hype of modern, uh, considered by a lot of people to be this ultra powerful card, and indeed it is in modern, but in a limited format, it's not. And even though it's a rare, uh, there are commons that are more powerful than Tarmogoyf, such as Lightning Bolt, which is one of the most powerful cards ever printed. Or Swords to Plowshares or something. Ugh, like Swords. Ugh. Honorary mythic, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and there you go. And then you begin, and this is how a cube starts. It's going through what are the best cards. Ignore rarity and just the best cards. And if you only have the room of, uh, you, you said 360, if you want to do, that'll support. 360 supports about four to eight players. Uh, in fact, I believe eight players for 360. Now, I'm an English major, so don't hold, the, hold me up to this, but I believe that's the full cube gets drafted with eight players uh, for a 360 cube. Uh, 
Regular cube is 540 cards, which supports 8 to 12 players, and then some lunatics go and do large cubes, or game stores, or organizations, you know, magic clubs and organizations, or some people do 720 large cubes, which you do two pods of eight if you got 720 cube. It's hardcore. That sounds like a good night. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's like two booster boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, what else about uh, cubes? So it's singleton, you're gonna have one of each card. What, how do you have your lands? You keep them separate, and then how do you do that? What I do is I have this big wooden box, and I have uh, all the cards uh, in the cube on one side, and then I have my tokens in the middle, and then the basic lands on the other side. That's because it, one of the pains of owning a cube is that you have to bring it. And so you don't want to bring multiple boxes every time you show up to cube. So I like to keep everything in one box for storage concerns. But yeah, and and you got to make sure your lands are all sleeved. If you if your if your cube's sleeved, make sure your lands are sleeved. How many lands do you usually or do, do you suggest bringing? I and mean, that's a lot of sleeved lands. It depends how many non-basic mana fixing lands are in your cube. Um, so like for for my actual cube, the one I use. Um, like the one in the, the holiday cube tournament on, on my channel, I only actually bring, uh, 25, uh, basic lands of every land type just cause there's so much like fetch lands, shocks, duels, all, right. all those things. And people have sometimes I've seen decks built with three basic lands in them in cube and that means that people are pretty much playing their entire pool because they spent so many picks on non-basic lands um but in my noob cube i'm actually bringing 40 of each basic because i don't have the mana fixing um that that it requires yeah no and that's definitely something uh lands are a, a major issue of keeping them separate you mentioned already that you have to make sure that when you are done with a night of drafting everyone on uh, on gunpoint you know needs to take their basic lands out and you have to have your basic lands in the same sleeves that the rest of the cube is in so you do not want to get those basic lands shuffled back into your cube everybody has to be very good about taking the basic lands out returning them to the slots in your box or compartment or wherever it is you store those basics you want to keep your basics sleeved up in the same sleeves as the rest of that cube and so that's definitely something to be careful with okay so that's a cube you've got anywhere between 360 and up cards one of each ideally you're going to shuffle up the non-basic land component of the cube before each draft you pull three packs of 15 cards randomly from it rarity is not something that you pay attention to with some exceptions such as if it's a popper cube and then people can pull as many basic lands already sleeved up from the land collection that you have put together and, and most players like to bling out their cube including their basic lands and it reflects them and uh, you know I, I actually when I was at GP Vegas some some cool guys came up to me and had a popper cube and uh, he had blinged out with oh gosh it was I believe seventh edition foils and it was seventh? all the same i think seventh it was something wow. like uh, maybe not if if they're watching leave the comment I mean, that's it was really cool. cool what i liked was it was all the same land so for the planes it was one piece of artwork and it was all it was all the same like his favorite planes artwork and stuff and other people like go for the avon lands and and whatever and, and that's a neat thing too is that if you're taking that long term approach to cube is it can start to reflect you in certain ways which artwork you choose of the cards uh whether or not you're going to foil it out or get promos or full art when it's available or or I, I know people who get banged up stuff that's how they can afford to do a power cube he's this uh, friend of mine is always looking for the most banged up chewed up cheapest cards because it doesn't matter he's not going to get a judge call in his living room and he just wants to be able to play a, a, a power cube and so there you go uh, it's it, just a quick side note. Uh, when I did the holiday cube, every on game match that we did, we actually switched out the players' lands, the basics, to snow covered lands. So if you if you watch in the holiday cube, yeah, because <laughs> um, it was the holiday. <laughs> I like that. Oh, the immersion. Oh, so I'm sucker for immersion. Oh man, do you notice that? <laughs> okay, so we touched on this a little bit, uh, but why build a cube? Is there reason beyond, we already mentioned that you can draft for free once it's built. 
is that really all there is to it, or is there is there more reasons to build a cube? Um, I can think of a couple more. Uh, I mean, you're world building when you're building a cube, right? So all of the your favorite things about magic, if you've never had a chance to put them together, if, if the format that you play, um, the, these cards were never optimal in those formats, here's a chance to put them all together, draft them, and, and play, play with them like that. Um, another, another reason to build a cube is to meet new people. Um, the reason I built my noob cube that I'm doing right now is because I wanted to meet new magic players in Toronto because most of my friends, they actually quit playing magic and they only really play cube. I wanted, I wanted to meet some new people who, who maybe haven't had a chance to try out cube. So I've been going to the stores. I've been meeting a whole bunch of new people off YouTube, <laughs> every, uh, on Facebook and, and playing this cube. And, uh, it's, it's really been a great opportunity to, for not just me to meet new people, but for maybe some of my friends to meet new potential friends or, or them to meet each other. It's really been, a, there's been a community gathering around this cube. That, that's awesome. And I, I feel like if there were, if there was going to be anything that would create that kind of community, it totally would be a cube, right? Cause the games are so, I guess, unique among any other format. And also people don't go into a cube like, you know what? I'm going to take this down. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm going to own it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to put on my glasses. No one's going right. to know what I have. Like, who visor yeah, visor, shade. Who, who who has it like it's like oh oh first pick lotus sh- drop out first place get in a box no one does <laughs> right no one does that so so when you go in yeah like you obviously want to do well but it's just so fun seeing the cards and being with it, it's it's a group experience right it's not just you and i think that's that's unique to cube drafting not even drafting in general cube drafting specifically that nothing else even has. I think even even more so than Commander, it's it's an experience, and that's yeah, so nice. It's actually been the opposite of, of that as well. Like when people dra- draft my cube, uh, the noob cube, they're like, "How can we make this better? Like, why is white blue dominating every draft we play?" And well, it's that's like, good, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, and I they're like, like "How about next time? Next time, if you invite me to play this noob cube, I'm gonna bring all these cards to donate. I'm gonna bring like a pack rat. I feel like a pack pack rat is gonna change the game on this format." And and. It's Everybody's been really amazing that way, and we're kind of building this world together, like as a group, and uh, so cool. making m- turning it into what all of us together want out of a limited format. It's like sandbox magic. Oh, so good. Yeah, that's that's uh, a lot of organizations and clubs. I know that like uh, uh, up in Seattle, things like the Lady Planeswalkers Society, they keep a cube for their events and, and lots. I mean, there's so many of these organizations after school clubs and stuff where they have a community cube that isn't going to have lotuses in it, but it takes donations. And it's like, yeah, here, add this rare, add this whatever. And then we've got this for all of us to play. And that's a really cool aspect as well. When you have a cube that's your own, you can, you're always like, you're going to always have a lot of friends <laughs> because, you know, you've got that cube. Like I said, there were, there, there, and I'm sure they weren't the only ones, but I bumped into people at GP Vegas that at a GP, they brought their own cube and they were, it wasn't just like coming up to me. They were just asking people who in between rounds or matches or whatever, run out of money. Some of that stuff was expensive. Do you want to go sit down over here and draft from our cube and making a lot of friends in the process? It's such a wonderful community aspect as well. Maintaining friends you already have, meeting new people, great stuff. I I really love what you said too about like having those discussions. Like I've been thinking of doing something for my channel where there's like a Talarian Community College cube, but it's going to start out with just a very basic setup and we will talk about how we can improve upon it. And so what would we want to bring to this cube to make it better and, and things like that? Do you need a TA for that course? Absolutely, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd like to apply for that job. <laughs> Will you work for free? You're hired, like any TA. I didn't mean that. Oh, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that like Tolarian Community College. I just mean TAs work for free. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, another thing I also we haven't mentioned about Cube, and I, I, I failed to mention it in any of my Cube videos, so I don't want to forget, is that you can also do Sealed Constructed from a Cube. And I know that Sealed is, for most people, not 
uh, a favorable format compared to draft, but there's a few advantages of being able to do sealed, and the one that I uh, have is that I can do sealed constructed with one other person. And so, uh, again, like I said, I had uh, 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 just a friend over the other night, and he wanted to get some magic, and the quickest, we did not have four to eight people over to draft. But we were able to just do sealed constructed from my Innistrad cube and just put out 15, six 15 card packs. And this allowed us to get a couple games in before dinner, put it back away. It's a lot less cleanup when it's you and one other person as well. And it, again, is just like pulling out that cube to just get a couple games of magic and then putting it back in the closet. And so I do want to point out that another reason uh, that you can build a cube is you can use it for sealed constructed. You are pulling booster packs out of that cube, and so there's no reason not to grab six booster packs and do a sealed constructed with one other person, or if you happen to prefer sealed. Some people maybe prefer it. I know most people really prefer draft, but you know what? It's an option. It's there. It's available. Also, Pack Wars is a lot of fun with the cube. <laughs> and um, one thing that I would also mention is if you have two people and you're playing sealed and that's getting a little tired, uh, you should definitely look up Winston drafting and you should look up grid drafting because those two are, work really well with cube. And it's also fun to try out new formats that you're not sure about, right? Because you don't want to be wasting money buying packs and then, and then halfway through you're like, oh, I don't understand this format. Uh, why did we play this? We've wasted these three packs or six packs or whatever. Uh, uh, so try out new limited formats with a cube because it doesn't cost you anything. And if you're playing cube with four people, I would suggest playing with five packs of nine as opposed to three of 15. Interesting. I've not I've not yet done that. I have not met. Where, where'd you get that? From? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> what is that? Five, you... five packs of nine, because I think that uh, you don't see the same pack go around that as much. Ah, and it has, right. It's 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 honestly it's a lot better. Five packs of nine. Right, and because rarity doesn't matter, so it's just yeah, wow. Yeah, you invent your own pack size too, right? That's, it's cube. That's genius. I've never even heard of that. All right, I'm out, guys. Yeah, just. Yes. <laughs> Although you, you're making me very, you're, yeah, right. You're making me very nervous. Wizards of the Coast is going to be so. Instead of everybody buying three packs of fifteen cards, we can shift to not to we nine had it right card at home packs lands. and make we had them buy right. five of them. And <laughs> Less we'll keep cards, the price the, the same. Right. Oh gosh. That's genius. Yeah. No, that yeah. seriously just blew my That's a great idea. That's, such a, good That's idea. a great idea. It's awesome. Wow. Try it. I'm I'm going to. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. So uh I think that a really great transition to talking about the different types of uh cube would be to start with what is just a power cube considered to be, and then going down into the different types that we know about or we own or what we've played. Uh, is your cube that you use for the holiday draft, what category is that in? Is, that's not a, it's not a power cube with uh, uh, the power nine, correct? I would, a, I would say it's like a power cube minus the power nine and time vault. Which is, I believe that's a powerless cube. Is yeah. I, I think a lot of people say when they say powerless, they mean it's the strictly best of everything except the power nine. Yeah, and I mean it doesn't have certain cards like also like time vault. Like time vault's ridiculous, if you because it it's either just going to win you the game immediately or it's it's completely pointless and you shouldn't play it. Right? Like <laughs> there's it, cards that have like no interaction at all like that. I mean there's some other ones that I have in my cube, but but cards like time vault are just are, are kind of ridiculous i think I, I personally but other people might Time like vault's super broken you don't have to that's not i don't think that's a, everyone agrees 10 volts super broken right and i would say that's probably the most common type of cube that you're going to encounter is actually not a power cube which everyone certainly drools over but a powerless cube which is uh just omitting the the power nine and time vault uh yeah so what other types of cube then are there? Uh, you already mentioned, okay, so like different cubes that I've personally played. Uh, yeah, on my sure. yeah, On my channel, uh, you could actually see me play something called the Mono Blue Cube as well. Uh, <laughs> so they, they just got rid of all the chaff, the white, black, green, red, all the garbage. They just got rid of it. <laughs> and so it's just... <laughs> it's just blue cards and uh, an artifact. I'm listening. I'm, and, I'm uh, listening. And non-basic lands. Continue. And <laughs> how now? 
Oh my goodness, I, I, uh, that is really interesting. A mono blue cube, getting rid of all the other colors. I wish I had known, I, I, I haven't seen those videos. I'm gonna go watch them after this. I, I would love to see a sample hand of that. Yeah. Is that Utopia? I actually brought my friend and we were we were filming it, and he just thought we were cubing. He had no idea until he opened pack one, and he was like, "What?" And then when he saw pack two, he was like, "Okay, something's wrong." Like pack one, maybe you didn't shuffle. <laughs> pack two is like a problem. What 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 happened to make you decide and to make a mono blue? That seems very specific. I didn't make it. I didn't make it. Like uh, the benefit of living in Toronto is kind of like, it's kind of like the birthplace of Cube. So there's so many cubes to choose from. We have like a Toronto Cube Facebook group with like hundreds, like a hundred something people in it. Of, of all these people have, there's like an uncube, so just unhinged, unglued, and some conspiracy cards that exist, it's been floating around. Um, one of the cubes, most one of the most interesting cubes I've played is, um, it's like a modern cube. So just the, uh, just modern, cards um but there's no non-basic lands in it and then after you draft you then rochester non-basic lands oh that sounds fun it's called a utility land draft <laughs> post draft <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> so like things like keswick wolfron and then also if you're feeling up for it they put stars on the lands so a land could have a one star rating a two star rating or a three star rating and you have a total of six stars that you can spend on utility lands afterwards. Wow. So you can be like, I want six one star lands or I want two three star lands. That's like fantasy. That's like fantasy sport. That's like integrating auction system. There's next level cube stuff going on here in Toronto. <laughs> that is insane. That is such a good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are in <laughs> Toronto and you are not currently cubing, there will be a link in the description to this Facebook, Facebook group. group. Yeah, uh, wow. It sounds like you live in Cube Mecca, and uh, if Insane. you are not already cubing, you need to check it out. I, I think I need to move to Toronto. There's also made-up cards. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played a cube with made-up yeah. cards. That's like, that's like uh, somebody who wants to try out new card designs. Uh, and Cube's the best place for it because it's not really a sanctioned Sandbox, format. right? Do whatever you want. Exactly. Um, what, an interesting thing that one of my friends did with this was that he holds like, um, it was kind of like an invitational where where people, like if, if you won, you got to make a card. Like he'll have a tournament and then you get to make a card. And like different people who played the Cube often enough got to design cards. Like it was a reward That's for cool. playing it. And it was like an incentive and it made a league and a community around it because the people who played it the most got to design their own cards for it. Wow. We're in Toronto now. Oh yeah, my. no, let's. That's like the dream. Let's just let's <laughs> start a new Magic the Gathering uh, YouTuber capital in Toronto. We're all just going to have a mass migration there. That's so cool. That wow. Sounds really Did cool. Do, do you know how it started in Toronto? Like, why Toronto? Did it just happen? I don't know really exactly how it started. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Gabe Sang and Josh Bullock uh, who started in around 2001, 2002. But that's just hearsay. Like, I spoke to a couple of players, Stephen Wolfman, who was back in the day, Toronto, played with all the best players, and Rich Hohen. I don't know if you guys know. I've Rich heard. Hohen. I've I heard. asked him. Yeah, he's he he's like one of the best limited players ever. Yeah, he's really good. Um, and I, I asked those two guys when I had like uh, an opportunity to meet them, and they both said Gabe Sang. And I feel like if and they weren't sure, but they uh, everybody kind of thinks it's Gabe Zhang. Uh, I haven't had a chance to speak with him yet, but when I do, I'll let yeah. you guys know. Wow, that's that's really interesting. So uh, that's crazy. The other most uh, another type of cube that's really common is the popper cube. Uh, and I'm a big fan of it because you can put it together, as its name implies, uh, on the cheap. And you can really, you know, a couple hundred bucks, even if you really cut out a few cards, 100 bucks, 125 bucks, put a popper cube together. And so it's not like a ridiculous endeavor. Like, for example, you're the cube you use for the holiday draft videos. What would you say is the sticker price on that if I didn't? If I didn't go for blinged out special cards, if I was literally just looking for the regular printings of those cards, what do you think the sticker price on that is? Yeah. I honestly, I have no idea. Like, I, 
I, I really have no idea at all. Because I started this, it looked like a popper cube when I started really? this thing. Right? Like, I, I just was like, I'm playing an Onslaught block and Judgment. Let's just throw that, a bunch of these amazing, cards in. Then. But I've been playing since then, and that's what the cube turned that's into. That's awesome. So, like, I, I, I mean, we did, we, we did price it out a little bit. Um, but we use the promo versions. What was and the stuff. price? Um, and it's like it's a it's over seven thousand dollars. So, like I don't know something right. like that. Third of a but... vintage deck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so so right, and obviously a lot of people are not going to be able to afford that buying power. Uh, so that's where a... it doesn't have power. Right. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> right. I they still have to get some cards. Still. The third of the vintage deck without power. So enter the pop, yeah. enter the popper cube, dear dear viewer, and the popper cube is a beautiful thing for many reasons. One, we can all afford it, or many of us can afford it. Uh, number two, you don't have to worry about people stealing your cards because if they're going to make off with, you know, I, I I'm sure that. Uh, if you've got a $7,000 cube, there is a nervousness sometimes if somebody you don't know might be drafting from it, keeping an eye on what they're doing. They've, they, they might be trying to make, you know, you never know what somebody's going to do if they're not a dear friend or you're only drafting with dear friends. But with Popper Cube, what are they going to do? Steal your lightning bolt? Maybe you've got a blinged out promo lightning bolt, but for the rest of us with that popper cube, you don't really have to worry if they make off with a card or something. And so it allows you to do some groups of people that you don't know as well. If it does get lost or stolen, it isn't a huge hit, that sort of thing. And so popper cubes are always what I, I always recommend starting with a popper cube. Like literally, we can include some links in this description. Go down to cubetutor.com. It's got a, a, a wide variety of uh, popper cubes there for you to choose from and start with that popper cube or start with just cards that you already own as well. You don't need to just restrict yourself to commons. Look in your library and take the best cards that you already own and you might find that you have 360. It's not like building a deck, right? So when you build a deck that you want to take to a tournament, you look at deck lists online and you say, oh, this is what a competitive deck in modern or standard looks like. You're choosing what's competitive in your own format. You're creating the whole world. So you you could create a format where Alpha Tyrannix is the best card. You could do that. That could exist. It's up to you what you what is powerful and what is weak. That that, that actually brings me to I just I just found this thing on Cube Tutor called the Terra Cube. It's dinosaurs? No, no, it's, Terra, it's the worst Lance. cards in Magic. <laughs> no, okay. Now I'm oh, okay. so glad. All right, we need to have a PSA here. Uh, we need to have a PSA because oh, when great. I was when I was in GP Vegas and and the gentleman came up to me and said, uh, "Do you want to draft from our cube?" and I immediately went, "Yeah!" and then I stopped and I said, "Wait, wait!" and I asked what all people should ask, which is, "What type of cube is it?" and they said, "It's a popper cube." Great, because I was asking to see if it was a strictly worse cube. And just at my local game store the other day, when I was down there for Modern uh, Saturday, a bunch of people came in and said, "Hey, we got some pizzas coming, and we're having a free draft from our cube. That's a strictly worse cube." And I'm like, "No, thank you. Not for all the free pizza in the world." Some people enjoy strictly worse, but a PSA. Do not build a strictly worse cube as your first cube, and it can often be really unpleasant, grindy, horrendous games. It sounds hilarious to build. It sounds hysterical to look at the hands and to draft, but then to sit down and play, it is misery incarnate. I am actually just really an opponent of the Strictly Worse Cube. <laughs> I, I know they've done a lot of jokes about it on, on Friday nights, and so people think that's a great place to start. Do not start with a Strictly Worse Cube. Is my tweet opinion. It to me. Is do, my tweet opinion. it to me. Oh, gosh. Yeah. No, I do. On, now that we're on the note of PSAs, I want to touch back on something. Uh, if you do build a cube that isn't a popper cube that has legitimate value, people lose their decks at tournaments all the time. They get their deck stolen. This is more than a deck. This will take you way longer to remake than a deck. I mean, if security wasn't important before, you know, with your modern or standard deck, this ball and chain the tie to your ankle if you have to. How, uh, Milo, do you have tips for protecting a cube in like a big, you know, like a GP or something? Like, how do you go about? I wouldn't, like, honestly, I just wouldn't bring it. Like, I had cards stolen from my cube because I used to bring it to the store and we play all the time. 
Um, but I, I had a player's reward wasteland that just got stolen. I had, um, uh, and that's like 300 bucks. That was like the most expensive card in my cube. And I had a, a bunch of other cards just, just stolen. And I was like, well, I guess I can't play this cube with people I don't know anymore. Like that's, that's the end of that. Um, because I, you know, losing, losing it would be the worst thing. Um, which is why I built this noob cube so that I can play at stores again, which was really the reason i had the cube in the first place right. so um but i would suggest um, if your cube is if, if it would break you to lose your cube don't don't bring it to a gp and and don't bring it to to a store to play with people you don't know um try to keep it at home um but i mean that's why i would recommend people uh, to to build like a, a cheaper cube, like a popper right. cube, or like just stuff that you have lying around. Makes sense. Yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. I think it's important. Yeah, you got to be careful. I mean, you are lending out uh, some very valuable cards, unless it's a popper cube. And even if it is a popper cube, maybe you blinged it out. Um, you know, use people that you know uh, uh, and trust. And don't be in an unsafe environment with it, like especially if you've got a very expensive cube, just taking it on the plane with you to every GP may not be a good idea. Uh, uh, yeah, be very careful about that stuff. And also, it might, cards might not get stolen, but people might just not care so much because they're not their cards. Um, so one thing that would happen a lot is people would leave their sideboards, sideboards lying around. Like, they wouldn't take their sideboards with their deck. And they'd be like, oh, because I'm not playing these cards. So I'll just leave them on this table over here, right? And they're not stealing the cards, but it's because they're being careless with them that they can even just get left at the store or misplaced or something like that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Make sure that cube with people that you know and trust and and don't be shy about saying ahead of time if it is an expensive cube, hey, guys, so, you know, when you shuffle, <laughs> don't, you know, uh, 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 don't, Riffle shuffle, perhaps. Yeah, you know, like, I like disclaimers you know, are <clears throat> well worth having. Yeah, don't hesitate to, to, to say that stuff. You would cringe if you saw the backs of some of the cards. In I my don't want to know, man. Because sure. of rip, riffle shuffling. We've been shuffling this cube for over 10 years. Uh, what kind of and sleeves you use? Double what sleeving kind of your cards you wasn't a thing. Oh, here we go. What kind oh, of sleeves geez. do you use? <laughs> I, originally, penny sleeves. Dual lands and penny sleeves, guys. I like this. This is this <laughs> that was like origin the first, story. first version of the origin cube. story. What are you using? What are you using now? And is it an A minus or higher on the professor scale? Oh, right. it's not yeah. a minus. I, I <laughs> he's not even. He's in ultra is, pros. Is are you in ultra pros? Low, low okay, okay. Tell, tell me, it's ultra pros with like a planeswalker back on them. Like you just got them at no. Walmart. No, I use the Legion right. sleeves. Uh, with the one with the Canadian flag yeah. on it, because on camera. No, those are great. You know it, the 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 yeah. matte. They're matte, not glossy, right? Are they matte? They're glossy. Let's All move right. on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna contact Legion and make sure that they make those in a in a mat, and I'm gonna have some shipped to you. <laughs> Just and, and, and I want video of you and your buddies having to resleeve the whole damn cube. <laughs> this right. podcast is okay okay T being taken hostage now i'm a big fan uh talking about other types of cubes i'm a big fan of block cubes where you design a cube either to simulate draft environment of a block or just to be able to draft from a block like my first cube really i mean was and it's still a work in progress uh is the innistrad cube because that was a very special set both in my heart and also in terms of mechanics and and for drafting and gameplay innistrad was a killer set some people say it's one of the best sets that they made uh i'm of course using from the whole block uh uh the best cards from the block in there and I'm able to say no soul bond because I hate soul bond in my Innistrad block cube. And that's one of the nice things. Uh, it's really, I think, straightforward. And there's a lot of great lists out there for, you know, hey, I want an Alara cube or I want a Lurewind cube or what have you. But for something like Conspiracy, which Wedge is a big fan of, we're not going to take the same approach of Singleton, are we? Do you want to talk to us a little bit about building a Conspiracy cube because conspiracy is something you're a big fan of and want to be able to keep drafting with friends so you started putting this cube together how does right. it differ from like you know my innistrad cube is singleton how is, yeah, how this, is this differing everything is different oh, wow. <laughs> for okay. someone watching for this being someone's first cube video just ignore 
this unless you're building a conspiracy cube. Uh, conspiracy, for those who don't know, was the uh, like spring summer promotional set last year that Wizards released that was designed as a multiplayer draft format. And it is for those of for those who played it, absolutely fantastic. Has cards that aren't in any other set, and I love it to death. I love playing conspiracy. I love everything about it. So I wanted to make a cube that did exactly that. That was like opening a box of conspiracy, which is unlike most cubes. Uh, like they just said, most people don't care about rarity. They just you know do whatever they want. But to make it seem like I'm opening a box. One, you can't have Singleton because that wouldn't happen in reality, right? Um, but another thing is Conspiracy Conspiracy is its own card type. Uh, so you need to add in one of those to every single pack in addition to having all your commons, uncommons, and mythics slash rares in the same number that packs would have. Because again, same, we're trying to get an identical pack, right? So instead of having Singletons, uh, the best version I've found currently is running three of every common, uh, just because, remember, we're trying to stick to 360 cards, right, for, you know, uh, eight people to draft three packs. And there are too many uncommons. So that's where it starts getting really difficult is because there are too many commons, you have to cut out the commons that you just don't like or that are just bad. Maybe reduce the number of others that aren't so good. Uh, it, it definitely becomes a personal preference kind of thing. But again, if you want to feel like you're playing conspiracy it's so hard, but you have to do that. You have to cut. And then uh, when it comes to rares or mythics, it's just one of each. So instead of it being singleton of everything, you have one of every rare slash mythic. Uh, ideally, it would be two of every uncommon, but you can't do that. Uh, so it's two of most uncommons, one of some. And for commons, it would be four of everyone, but you can't do that either because there's not enough room. So you take three of them. And with all the space you're cutting, you make room for all the one of every single, or not one of every, at least one of every conspiracy. Some of them you need more than one. And that becomes the balance issue. Welcome, conspir building this cube is the biggest headache because of all the testing it's going to take to figure out where these numbers should be. That's what, that's what makes it unique. You know, people talk about, uh, again, if we're talking about a regular cube, you build it over time, add and remove cards as you will. But when you're trying to mirror a set, like conspiracy, insanely difficult. Uh, but, but when it's done, I get to draft conspiracy all the time forever. Uh, but it's definitely, it's definitely an awkward situation uh, when comparing it to a regular draft, just because you're not really following the standard rules. You are trying to recreate, you know, the box draft format, uh, which is, it's, it's, a, it's a unique experience. Everywhere I look on the internet, there isn't much help for it. Uh, but the few places there are, it was very much that, you know, you need multiples. And what would what would cube be like if every cube was trying to run multiples of cards? It'd be a headache. It is a headache. Don't make it for your first cube. <laughs> I, I, I came into this whole process not knowing like a lot of I, I played plenty of cubes, but I hadn't built one. First cube being a conspiracy cube, that's gonna it's gonna bury me. So, but not, I bet you're, you're you're learning. I bet you're also though learning that conspiracy format inside and out in doing so <sighs> and then constructing it. I mean, it's like getting inside the machine, you know, with yeah. a wrench and and seeing every nut and bolt and thing of that nature. And, and cog. cog. <laughs> right Sorry. there, I, you I, go. I gotta cog. say, I gotta say the one thing is that the more. The more I look at it and the more I work on the list, the more I realize how genius Wizards was when they made it. I can't imagine all the testing they did for this. Because remember, it's specifically made for multiplayer drafting. And it's... Which isn't really done No, it's not. Before, right? it, it, it hasn't how been. And for them to... I Honestly, they nailed it. Like, if you play Conspiracy, they nailed it. It was an amazing format. And they're like, there are a few Conspiracies that are like, eh... But the majority of the cards are great. Their balancing in the format is awesome. Uh, I didn't have to do much, or at least so far, I haven't had to change power as far as colors are concerned. Things are mostly balanced. But balanced to a point where they can put Marchesa, the only shard, in the set, and that still be fine. You don't even have to overcomp you don't even have to compensate for that by putting like a Jun card in there. You don't, because it's still it's it works, it's fine. And there's there's nothing else like that. So the more I the more I work with this, the more I realize that wizards just they killed it, like they absolutely nailed it. And I you see during normal sets where they'll print cards at you know rare that are good for limited, right? And they know that they don't want that coming up a certain amount of times or at uncommon. 
And we see that and it's like, okay, that's why they did that. But conspiracy, that's the whole set. Beautiful. And so it just, it raised my level of appreciation for what they've done to just whole new, it absolutely amazing. Conspiracy is like the best set ever. That's I look. I, I, I look forward when you you have uh, that cube mastered and finished to oh, seeing man. a video all about how I can build one of my own because I <gasps> definitely want there will be. to do that. Excellent. So let's let's why don't we do a, a, a draft simulation real quick or at least just uh, talk about some of the cards in an opening hand or two. Uh, I'm going to be using, uh, and again, the best resource, the hub uh, for Cube users is cubetutor.com. And if you are new to Cube, go check out cubetutor.com because it's got draft simulators where you can put your cube. So you don't need to own all the cards in a cube that you're constructing uh, uh, in uh, uh, just lists and such. You can punch in a cube that you're thinking of and you can start simulating drafts from it, what your pick is, but also what pack might get passed to you. You can look at other people's cubes and it's like, huh, well, there's a lot of say, popper cubes or a block cubes, like an Innistrad cube. There's several Innistrad cubes on Cube Tutor. I want to, you know, see what these packs are going to look like, and you can look at a draft simulator. I'm going to use CubeTutor.com's own uh, uh, site runner, uh, uh, Ben's Cube, which is, for many people, a real, you know, flagship cube. And uh, we've pulled up a sample hand, which will be a pure... Uh, yeah, no. What? Uh, before we start, yes. before we start, okay. I just want to say we're we're not sponsored at all by Cube Tutor. They didn't. We haven't talked to them at all. They're just a really good site, and you need to go there. They was someone would have said it. I'm hey, just saying hey, it. Hey, no, now actually, I got to say this: Cube Tutor on their site, you know, they actually have a donate button, and I just want to read this right here. Do they? I, I want to read this. I strive. This is from Ben. Uh, 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 ben, I, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, Titmarsh. Uh, I, and this is what he writes. I strive to keep Cube Tutor as free and accessible as possible, but it currently costs $70 a month in server hosting to run. Any donations towards this are greatly received. He does not make any money off of this. He is not paid by wizards. There are no ads on his site. It is the greatest resource for people who cube. And this guy's shelling out 70 bucks a month from his pocket so that it's there for all of us. Wizards of the Coast should be paying him to run this site, but they're not and they won't. And if he went away, it goes away. Uh, throw him a dollar, folks. Uh, uh, he shouldn't be paying out of his pocket to Agreed. keep this up for us, and I know he is. I happen to know that he is putting out pocket money for this site to be there. Uh, go throw him a dollar, please. No, no, he's and the not. Upkeep. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And the upkeep of this, like these sets are updated when yeah. they come out. Like, oh yeah, immediately. This they're updated. You can upload an image of an uh, alter version of one of your cube cards so that when people draft it on Cube Tutor, they see the altered version. That the the copy that is in your actual cube. Like the 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 bells and whistles on this thing is are amazing. It does not look like a guy who just needs $70 a month to host. It does not look like that at all. Yeah. And it's and that sort great. of stuff really gets me too. Just in the, the idea that this guy loves the game and the community and the format so much that he set all this up without any profit in mind, sort of thing, and and is paying seventy bucks a month. And and just that little note where he's like, "Hey, you know, it cost me seventy bucks a month to keep this going," just says everything I need to know. Uh, no. Cube Tutor isn't sponsoring us. I really hope the community maybe sponsors him. Uh, that being said, here is our, and we're going right. to have this appear on the screen. Uh, uh, Wedge Magic. and Milo uh, have this in front of them. Here is our sample hand from Ben's Cube of CubeTutor.com. Uh, skin Render, Inferno Titan, Urabask the Hidden, Heartbeat of Spring. Mox Ruby, I guess this is a power cube, Countryside Crusher, Rude Awakening, Jace, Architect of Thought, Awakening Zone, A Quarter Paladin, Siege Gang Commander, Mox Diamond, two Moxes in our first pack, Vampire Hex Mage, Murderous Redcap, and a very beautiful foil, 
karmic guide. Uh, I actually want to throw first to Wedge to hear his first pick. You would. I would. <laughs> you let's, would. And then we'll hear from Milo. And then All maybe right. me. But let's, I want to hear from Wedge maybe, first. Maybe. Come, please. Yeah. Like, you're getting away from this. <laughs> What's the first right. pick, Wedge? As the way you said, you know what? I'm just going to ignore. Okay. Here. Listen. When I... When I draft cube, all right, for those of you who have seen it on stream, you know that uh, I do one thing, and that's force reanimator every time. So, so I am first picking Karma Guide <laughs> because I love, one, I love Karma Guide. Two, I think it's a strong card in general. And three, I don't know what it is about reanimator and dra I just like it, Re playing reanimator and cube because I'm confident. I, I haven't seen this whole cube list. But I'm confident that if there's a karma guide in here, there's an entire reanimate package in here. And that's I love playing reanimator. So I would pick I would pick karma guide. I know it's not it's just it's, it's my first pick. That's what I would do if I were playing because I really like I really like forcing reanimator and I love karma guide. Let the flaming begin. All right. <laughs> Milo, what's the first pick? Well, I will say that um, karma guide is my second favorite <laughs> card <of> this back. <laughs> but. Uh, I think it's really obviously Mox Ruby. Uh, one, you don't have to choose a color, right? So you, you have a turn to pick up on signals. Uh, and then also it's the most powerful card in the pack. And For sure. um, if you pass it, the person next to you is going to be like, so you open the library or Sol <laughs> Ring, right? <laughs> and then you're yes. going to be like, oh, no, I got this Karma Guide. <laughs> why, why are you hating on my strats, Why is it, it's, it, why no, is it, the, most why is it the most powerful card in this pack? Why is it the most, what's it do that's so powerful uh, uh, that you said the most powerful card in the pack? Why is it more powerful it than just, Karma? I mean, it gets you, it gets you to turn two on turn mm -hmm. one, yep. right? Like, uh, immediately, uh, it's it's the best ramp possible. It's not even in green. You don't have to choose right. a color. Works in every single deck. It's, Versatility it's is like it. it even it, it, on it a red, cheat, this card's yeah, good. it cheats like everything. It cheats you to do anything you want. It's pretty fantastic, actually. I will say that if you take the Mox Ruby, uh, red is probably going to be taken. I think pretty quickly after that. Just. In my wait, oh wait, wait, Professor. Now Professor, if I what are you pass gonna, what are you gonna you pick? me, Inferno Titan. It's not the worst card <laughs> in the pack. That smile. It's I would, good. I would pick it's the good. Inferno Titan. It's That's it's amazing. Card. It's Inferno Titan, and I'm it's I'm like sure five. in future packs I would get a little bit of ramp, and I could totally like try and r race into the Inferno Titan. I love it. I love him hitting the battlefield and lightning bolting and splitting it up however I want every time he attacks. It's just Inferno Titan is such a great it's card. A fun card. It's such a bomb to hit that field. Let me ask you this, Milo. If if I passed you this pack, but I had picked Mox Ruby, so you're sitting next to me, and so I, let's pretend, actually recognized, which I would not have, that Mox Ruby is the pick from this pack. I take the Mox Ruby and I pass you this pack without Mox Ruby. Now what's the pick? It's Karmic Guide. Like, I think it's okay. Karmic Guide. Um, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> it is. I, I think that it it's good in a lot of different decks. Even if you're not playing reanimator, it's good in other decks as just the only thing that reanimates. Um, and, and it's amazing in reanimator. Sure. Uh, uh, something that's important to note with karmic guide and reanimator is that if you have things like, um, anime dead or necromancy, uh, you can target the karmic guide and it's going to get, it comes into play trigger, but then the re the necromancy or the anime dead is going to fall off and the karmic guide is going to go back to the graveyard yep, for black. That's right. super, it's super cool, though. Oh, I love that card. <laughs> <laughs> what, are some, what are some products that, like, Wizard, Wizards of the Coast actually asked this question a while ago. Wizards of the Coast said, if we were to try and support Cube, what's a Cube product? Do you think Wizards of the Coast should, like, like they sell 100-card uh, commander decks? Should they sell an entire Cube? Uh, wouldn't that... What should they do if they wanted to sell cube product? Do you guys have any ideas? I've got a couple. I'll I'll, I'll start. I I've got some pr product ideas. I would actually say that wizards would want to break away from the idea of selling everything that you need in one box for a cube and start 
latching on to the idea of deck building, or in this case, cube building, and selling different gears that you might need. So for example, having things such as a green suite, or, or a removal suite, and this is starting to sound a lot like the From the Vault series, and in a way it is. Imagine a From the Vault series that was actually on shelves and at that low MSRP, and that had more than 10 cards in it. Uh, and so maybe they would come out in spring with five cube boxes. And in each of them, there's, I don't know, name a number, 20, 25 uh, uh, cards. And it's, we're releasing removal, we're releasing creatures, we're releasing this, whatever, various components of a cube, maybe just colors, red, white, and, and this, and it's things that cube players would want that are run in most cubes that are good ideas and that have blinged out stuff about them. Foil cards, black border, special art, things like that. They could be selling those component pieces. I suppose they could also just start offering from the vault in such a way that anybody with, what's it supposed to be, 50 bucks? Uh, uh, anybody with 50 bucks could just buy it. And in a way, from the vault is the perfect cube product if anybody with 50 bucks could pick one up. It's like, those are the cards that go in cubes and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I gotta say, your idea is almost exactly what mine was. The first, the first thought I had was I was thinking of the game Munchkin, if, if you played Munchkin, they have a million expansion sets for Munchkin, right? And you can buy whatever you want. I think of them as like expansions, right? You have Wizards acknowledges that Cube's a thing and they just, they release expansions on it. You know, removal, great. What about like a Boros or a Zer like? And this is yeah. a great, this is a great way to make money. And, and honestly, they can like include that's there. with it instruction packets and things that say yep. things such as you're shooting for 320 cards. Start by looking through your collection. Go and as you go through your collection, ask yourself, just with the cards you have, choosing one of each, ask yourself, is there a better card than this in my collection to replace it? And then once you have that 320, you buy their Boros, and it's called These Will Be Upgrades to What You Have. You buy their Removal Suite, and it's called Now, regardless of what you had in your collection, you get a bit of an upgrade in your Removal Suite across colors, perhaps. They uh, can even bring, like, a starter. I mean, look at the Deck Builder's Toolkit. Right. What if you made something like that, but with Cube in mind? It doesn't seem that big of a stretch right. for them to be able to do that, right? Deck Builder's Toolkit is... Oh, more than 20 guards, right? So Sure. I don't well, I mean, think that's they, completely they out of the realm of possibility. Hell, the and commander it's packs a great are 100 start. cards. If they really wanted to, they could divide right? up Right, they a could make a great intro. Pieces. Yeah, a great you know. intro cube list. Absolutely, absolutely. What if they made it like the uh, the World Championship decks with the silver borders oh, or gold borders? Oh, that so is that such way they could do something idea. like fetches and shocks. Oh, oh my right? god. And then you don't have to charge or pay the price that you would normally pay for fetches and shocks. Milo. That's oh a my great god. idea. And, uh, so that's for, the best idea. Okay, so for it's not like competitive, you can't use them for, you know, competitive play, but with these cubes, you don't have to use it for competitive play. But then what's stopping everybody from just proxying their own cubes at that well, point, too, right? Well, one of the things right? that's Which stopping is... people from... Sorry to interrupt, but I'll, I'll just really quickly say, one of the things that's stopping people from proxying is that it's hard to make good-looking proxies. Uh, when it's I so print ugly. Out, yeah. I proxy out decks to test them before I buy, but they're, they're, they're printed out of my black-and-white inkjet printer. Uh, it's sloppy, it's a lot of work, and it it's ugly. All the cards look the same, and so them releasing the Silver bordered real magic cards with on on the real magic paper. Or sorry, gold, gold bordered. bordered. Well, maybe yeah. they'll make them silver bordered. Whatever. Oh no, that's 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 un, uh, un, yeah, the un, best un, un cards. Cards. They'll make them green. Yeah. No, no, this is gold bordered. Gold bordered. They'll make them gold bordered. <laughs> uh, uh, but there you go. The reason that's stopping people from proxying it is that you can't get good proxies. I would say. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't proxy like at that because a cube is so it's so much a part of you and what you're doing. And if you want a cube with there's it's just not fun. Playing with a little piece of paper out of a printer. I think that would be the thing stopping them. And just the feel of like an actual magic card is just now stutter. for for our younger viewers. Can you explain to them what these decks that you're basing your idea on were? Because that's actually components. Because I also believe while. that those are very very common in a lot of cubes that people do go after some of the wastelands or force of wills. Guys, guys cradle yeah, and yeah stuff. i've seen yeah. a lot of those yeah that, that one you see a lot and it's actually kind of so expensive what are these? Now. yeah but what they were was they reprinted um the decks that won the world championships or i guess they were the finalists yeah and it was the, first and, and the second. winner 
Yeah. Yeah. So every year uh, there was a world championship and uh, the decks from first and second would get reprinted as like a box set, but the they would be gold bordered and there would be like a printed gold signature from the player on every card. Beautiful. So that you couldn't use them um, when you're playing like sanctioned magic. They were just meant to be used for casual play against each other. So you and your friends could pretend you're at the worlds playing the best decks in the in, in the they, world. They were great promotional. I remember way back when uh, Birds of Paradise was in for like a few years. So there were birds of golden birds of paradise everywhere uh, when I was playing. They were awesome promotional, and they, they were they weren't even expensive. They were just the same. They were like the same prices you'd expect from like what a I, intro pack. If this I remember. is like I don't want to segue into a whole other conversation, but this is something <laughs> that they should return to because it allowed people for twenty bucks to buy championship decks and and sit down and play and learn the game. My next, you know, we talk about next level magic, uh, and my first next level was when a friend proxied up a uh, deck that won a GP, and we both had our casual decks. Uh, I, and and he proxied up a, a deck that had won a GP, and he said, "Let's try it out." And it destroyed all of our casual decks, like you wouldn't believe. And then I was like, I had looked at the list and said, "I don't see why this is a good deck." And then I was like, "I see why this is a good deck." Uh, after it destroyed us, and then playing with it, uh, I started learning new things about the game, and I started building new casual decks that were better, and then just new decks for F and M that were better. And by being able to buy those top tier decks for 20, 25 bucks or whatever it was and have real magic cards to play with, but not in actual tournaments, but with your friends, that's one of the best casual products there are. And the other applications, now bringing it back to Cube, the other applications are things like, hey, we can't get Gaia's Cradle anymore. I, I want to play Cube, but I don't have $7,000 to have Gaia's Cradle in my Cube and all these other cards. Well, maybe we'll turn to things like the gold bordered cards from the championship decks, which a lot of people do. And they stopped making these a while ago, unfortunately. It's a real shame. It's a real shame. I would love to see those come back. Also I would too. They also did collector's yeah. edition. Yeah. Which w it looked like uh, alpha yeah, like, well, or whatever. Super um, square. Except they had square yeah. quarters. Yeah. So, um, but, and on the backs, they had a gold border around the, um, the magic logo. Um, I actually, the birds of paradise, I had a birds of paradise from collector's edition where we cut the corners. <laughs> so it looked like a card and that card got stolen oh, from my no. cube. Someone oh, was beta. <laughs> you did too good of a <laughs> and job, they got man. Home, and they were like, Curses too good of a job. Miles. <laughs> so I like to think about that when they found out that it wasn't wow. actually a beta. Birds. I mean, uh, collector's edition had the mot had the power. So yeah. More va definitely harder to get than world championship, but those I love those back. That's such a good idea. Yeah, that is a oh, great wow. idea. That's genius, man. You're just a fountain of knowledge right now. <laughs> fountain of knowledge. That's good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, answers I, everything. I, I I I think that there is a difficult area for expansion for wizards from a marketing standpoint, but I do feel that cube gets back to a lot of the heart of the game and that it's something they should look into. I would really hate for them to make like, let's say $300 cubes that they sell like akin to the commander product. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, I do think that maybe encouraging local game stores to have store cubes is a good idea. Uh, one of the ideas, you know, and this is a difficulty, if it's not a popper cube at, at a store, then there's definitely a fear of people trying to make off with the cards. But uh, one idea that was floated was stamping. This was, this was you, you had this idea, right, Milo? Stamping the cards. Yeah, Tell us yeah, about so, that. This is, I think, a yeah, great a good thing. idea. Yeah. So like you create a popper cube if you're a store, and then uh, just say you're, you're with Star City Games or whatever, you could stamp them with Star City Games logo. It could say like Star City Games cube on the card, right? So anybody who takes it can't use it for anything because everybody will see that it says Star City right. Games cube or whatever right. store. Not for um, a resale. Uh, right on the card. Mm. Yeah, not for resale. Exactly. So it's it's completely worthless. Outside. And in fact, it's like contraband, right? <laughs> right? Like... Yeah. You know, if you're caught with it, everybody knows where it mm -hmm. came from. Um, or if you're just some sort of without a stamp, you just write on it with a with a sharpie, right? It's a good idea. And if it's popper, like you know, you're not really losing that much. You're not losing as much as you're gaining by teaching players how to draft without forcing them to pay fifteen dollars first. 
Um, because everybody's first draft is kind of the same. Oh, do I take the rare? I'm not going to win this draft anyway. I'll take this rare, you know. Um, by having a popper cube, you can teach everybody how to draft before they have to invest money into playing uh, a format that they're not comfortable it's with. It's a great gateway into into spending money at, at, at a store. It, uh, I think it's it's more... Cause, all right, you see Wizards send those 30-card sample decks around, right? To yeah. try to teach people, right, try to teach people yeah. magic. This is so much better. This is so much better. It gets them right. It gets them in the driver's seat. Oh, man. It, and it, it really shows you the best of what magic has to offer. Which is like community and creativity. Oh, yeah. Oh, so good. They need to do this with Magic Origins. Send out Please. Magic Origins cubes. Oh man, that'd be so cool. I that that's another that's a great idea. Either that, either that, or I think the you know deck builder type thing with expansions. One of those. I I really like the store idea though. That because I mean you're killing two birds with one stone there. You're getting kind of a product out there more, but you're also strengthening a community. It's the, at so- the store encouraging people to come to right, the store. Right. And right? it's the sort of thing where a store owner might, you know, look into putting that together as a, a badge or a, a, a sign of pride of the store and they can have their own slant on it. It's, this is the whatever store cube. It's our brew of us and our top players and things like that and our little mixture and cauldron that we've put together and it's stamped to high hell so that, yeah, the cards are worthless, but it'll be something where no, people are, are incredibly unlikely to steal them. And and, and, you know, maybe you're not going to have the, you know, uh, uh, Mox Rubies in that cube, but it's still something that you can put together at your store. At the very least, a store can certainly put a popper cube together, which is, is if Any somebody store should be off, able to put a popper cube You know, cube yeah, anybody it. makes off with that. You're, you're, you're really a rotten person if you're stealing a $2 popper card yeah. from your store. And it's perfect for F&M. Just say you don't get eight people right. for yeah. F&M. And your event doesn't yeah. fire, you can Pull you can tell for, people, yeah. hey, stick around, play some cube instead of sending people home. It's a perfect I, idea as a, as a last resort too for F and M's because the promos. I mean, you could give them exactly. Out anyway, yeah, I was right? just gonna like, say like there's like, even if it's not some you know big F and M you know cash tournament thing when it gets like ten booster bags, you could even give even if you just gave like a few dollars of store credit or point uh, added up like points like people do with leagues now, right? Like the league system works. Do that. It's such a small. You get so much more out of it, yeah. Right than what you'd be than what you'd be losing. Uh, that's that's such a wonderful idea. Would it create create like it creates like store cohesion? Oh man, yeah. And so Sign and that up. would be something where I think that that's not a product <laughs> that Wizards is selling, but something that they're offering in terms of like encouraging stores, giving them support for it. Maybe they would provide stores with like uh, prize support for people drafting from the cube to encourage it. Uh, you know, cards that might be fun in cube, things like that. There's there's a lot of ways you even can Even just go. extra promos, honestly. Like, you don't even have to throw they need that to, much. From what I hear, they need to do that just for Friday Night Magic in general. That, that's like they, a whole yeah, other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> so we won't get into that. Podcast. We won't get into that. But yeah, all right. <laughs> so final thoughts here. I think we're, we're, uh, uh, we're starting to wrap this up. Uh, are there any final thoughts about cube that you guys want to offer? You want to go first or... I think maybe you should All right. take a yeah, step. Uh, <laughs> no, basically, what, if you take anything out of this conversation, uh, I, I think a few of the biggest things for me is Cube is a turn of value for you and your group of friends, right? It you you spend X amount of money to get it, and then you're good forever. The fun you could you could draft a cube a billion times and get a different experience every time. So. That's really good. And also, I think you, you, you touched on it before, but I really want to emphasize this. It is great for your friends who aren't currently playing and who don't have their own decks. Because I have some friends who like to play Magic, but they actually cannot because they don't have decks. And so when they come over, I either have to build them something beforehand or, you know, we have the dual decks anthologies now, which is great. But having something oh, like a cube. Aren't, yeah. And, and yeah, no, having something like a cube is just so much. I was just as an example. These, it's so much better. Like Milo said, it keeps them up to date. It's it's like the ultimate way to play Magic with a group of friends. It's just wonderful. And that's, if you're to take away anything, it would be that no matter how good we make it sound, it is so much better to play it than how much than how much we're trying to talk it up. And that's why I think we're trying to talk it up, because the experience itself is just unimaginably great. If you're getting stale of playing Magic the way you are, this is... Yeah, definitely something you should be looking into, especially if you're feeling stale. 
uh, especially if you're feeling stale, then m you might want to just migrate into a cube, into having that for you and your friends. I hear people say to me, all I do is draft now. I've been burnt out of standard. Modern is on the fritz. Uh, and, you know, legacy is, is barrier to entry, not enough players, this and that. And I hear a lot of people say that to me. And a lot of those players then say, all I do is limited. And that's expensive. Long term, all I'm doing is drafting constantly. Uh, it gets expensive. Dud sets come out. Problems occur. Putting that cube together is... I, I think of cube as the apotheosis of magic. I've said that before. It is the ultimate form of this game. The best of the best. The best draft experience. The best play experience when executed properly. And that's something to strive for. That is absolutely what cube is. Uh, I, I actually kind of wanted to say uh, one thing that oh, we yeah. didn't touch on is that you're building uh, a cube f for yourself. It's your limited fire environment, but you have to make sure all the people who are playing your cube are also enjoying mm -hmm. themselves um, because you can't just play cube by yourself. It's not like I'm going to build this really annoying eggs deck and go to a tournament and force players to play against me. If, if your cube is all eggs, you have to have people to play Professor with you, right? So mad. And if people don't want to play that <laughs> format. So upset. <laughs> <laughs> so so make sure to listen to the players who are playing your cube and if they have suggestions uh you know even if it's not the way you want to play magic all the time maybe make some exceptions and throw some cards that you're not comfortable with in the cube and that's going to make you a better player as well um uh, another thing i wanted to say is that cube makes you really good at magic um if you're kind of a newer player you you're only used to maybe the last six sets that that have come out uh if you play cube you're going to be introduced to mechanics throughout the entire history of magic so by by playing that it's like getting a crash course uh in 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 magic in in all of magic in legacy and vintage um and even the stuff that's not playable in those formats and by playing those old mechanics, Wizards has a tendency to bring things back often. So you're going to be more prepared than than the average player when things like Scry become uh, keyword uh, abilities and, and, and prowess and whatever. Landfall, I'm sure, is coming back. In Absolutely. the hearts and minds of everyone. No, even if you just take, because I still have the, <laughs> I have the pack up that we looked at before, just that pack alone, you have Entwine, Echo, Persist, battle cry like these are mechanics that a lot of people have never heard of so it's you're absolutely couldn't agree more that's a great point absolutely yeah wow man are we oh man i'm so i want to like play cube now this is yeah let's is let's let's all time get, to let's do all this let's on to magic online Toronto's and not get that a draft far. draft Toronto's cube. not that far <laughs> but no i uh are we good so yeah. uh milo did it. if you've enjoyed hearing milo talk about cube if you want to see more about Cube, uh, where can they find you, sir? Uh, Milo the Gathering. Um, just go YouTube, search Milo the Gathering, or go youtube.com slash Milo the Great One. Links. Uh, number one. <laughs> Links will be in the description. Uh, and you can check it out. Uh, yeah, and we have the the Holiday Cube uh, is like the first playlist, or yeah, the first playlist you'll see on my channel. What do you What are you and doing now? Tons of cubage. What are you doing now? Uh, right now, I'm doing the Noob Cube. So I, I built this cube just with, just with cards I had lying around. I literally spent $20, and that was on the sleeves. The rest of the stuff was just in boxes collecting dust. I put it all together, and it's completely unbalanced and broken. And and white blue control, like five Sounds players like are the playing best it every place time to start. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, over time, I'm I'm also doing like um, tournament videos. They're just kind of like vlogs. But um, if you watch them, you'll see the progression of the cube and and how we're balancing it and how uh, we're meeting new players and and talking about their first experiences with cube and playing magic with strangers and talking about all sorts of things. So uh, if if you want to know what it's like either playing magic at stores with new people or playing cube, uh, definitely check out the noob cube. Go ahead, subscribe. subscribe. Absolutely, like, right now. Yep, absolutely. And and Wedge, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Who are oh. you? What do you what do you do? <laughs> I, I I had a feeling you'd bring that back. Yep. Uh you know, uh youtube.com slash Tiller. Oh wait, sorry, youtube.com slash the man of A little presumptuous oh. there. I always knew you were gunning for my seat. <laughs> I did it! My gosh. <laughs> From the very YouTube. beginning. YouTube.com <laughs> slash Tiller. <laughs> YouTube Raft has a to the man of college. Wow. New channel. I saw somebody make a comment that they think that uh like you might behind the scenes like own 
me and my channel. Like that we're like a part of like that the mana source is this mighty conglomerate and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Was I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like the magic YouTube Illuminati. Right. It's right, right. It's like basically, you know, like 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 you own like half the YouTube channels. You sit back in a if, suit with a cigar. Like if you look, we need to get more views to Milo. <laughs> if you look really close at our flower, there's a little eye like in the triangle, right, little right, Illuminati right. symbol. Anyways, uh, youtubecom slash my. I mean, youtubecom slash the Manosaurus. Uh, Twitter.com slash the Manosaurus, Facebook.com slash the Manosaurus. I post funny pictures all the time. Please go follow me so I can feel important. <sighs> That's basically all I want to say. And if you want to find and follow me, you're in luck because you're already there because this is being posted <laughs> on my channel. So if you don't know where to go for Tularian Community College, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Relax. <laughs> you're already there. Welcome. Look at you. You got this whole thing like <laughs> nice. That was <laughs> not prepared. <laughs> you have like the I'm going to go I'm going to go on eBay after this and see if I can pick up some of those championship decks while they're still cheap. Yeah, now that I think oh, that's such a good idea. Yeah, we, that's great. We just told all the viewers to do it too. Quickly, we're ahead. It won't be posted. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening everyone. Bye. Ooh.